Hey, good morning, World History. Uh, we are into week four, believe it or not, and I thought I'd give you a quick preview because a couple things might look a little different. Some of them look the same, but uh, let me just give you a quick overview of the week. Um, we've got a learning target here talking about causal factors again, and this uh, unit this week takes us to the age of exploration. Now, instead of having a digital notebook to kick things off and guide you through, we're doing something a little bit different. Since so much of it focuses on the world, we're going to use a world map. And if you go to that link, you'll this see... This map is your guide to the age of exploration. You'll see that you'll get a map with a bunch of little buttons on it. Um, and each one of these buttons will take you to um, information about different things that happen in those areas around the map. Now, there's a bunch of different ones, obviously, uh, lots to choose from. And if you come up here to the uh, home page, it'll take you to a document which is also shared with you in the Google Classroom. So uh, in the Google Classroom, there's this one called Age of Exploration Guide. And this is a guide to all the different links on that map if you'd rather go through it a different way. Each of them has information about a topic and uh, some of them have questions involved that you have to answer. Some of them don't, but you can just take notes. You can use this um, this document to take those notes. And also, when you're all done using one of these sources, if you come over here and give me a rating, you know, if you look at this Hudson's Voyage, you look at the interactive map, um, you take a look at it, sort of play around with it, and learn from it, and you say, yeah, that was okay, but it wasn't great. Uh, you know, give it a rating of two or three or four, whatever. Um, to give me an idea about how useful it was for you. So at the end of each one that you use, uh, after taking some notes or answering a question or two, um, go ahead and give it a rating that will help me. But you can use the map to get to it. Um, you can work on it right out of this the... This map um, is your guide to the aid. Yep. Yeah, it'll talk to you every time you open it up. Sorry about that. Anyway, a little bit different than... The, in the past, but it'll help you out and help you learn some of the material. Uh, the study guide is pretty straightforward, very much like what we've used before. This uses the textbook to give you the background, the basics of what we're studying. Um, th at the end of each one is a reading check that you want to make sure that you come in and you try it out, see how well you did on the assignment, if you found the information that would probably um, you know, be useful going forward. And don't forget to take those as you go. It really helps you sort of stay on track as you work your way through the unit. Uh, here's a suggested completion depth, uh, schedule for you. One assignment a day is a good pace to take, but of course it's not due until next Monday anyway. The work side of the assignment I haven't posted yet. We're going to actually uh, talk about that in, in Zoom meeting today a little bit, and then I'll post it tomorrow. It's actually going back to your Renaissance assignment and just doing a little bit more with that so you can get used to how to do a list of work cited. You've already done the, the background work. It's just putting it together now. There's a primary source assignment uh, a little bit later in the week. Um, four very short primary sources dealing with um, the things we'll be talking about in terms of exploring and the way they had an impact on the people who uh, lived in the areas that they arrived at. And then finally, the summative assignment is a timeline this week, not not an essay, not a paragraph, nothing like that. Uh, but it's a timeline assignment where you're going to be able to choose the events that you feel were most important. That's my timer. Sorry about that. Um, so you can be able to choose the events that you thought were most important, five to seven events, and you create a timeline. Now, there's some really neat tools you might have used, you might have never used, but you can try them out if you'd like um, to help you do this. One's called Online Timeline Maker, and the other one is Canva. Canva is used for lots of different things, but they have some timeline templates that will be really nice to use. Very different look to them, so you might want to see how they both work and decide which one you want to use. Or if you want to use something else, you can do that too. So you can create timelines in slides. You can create timelines all sorts of different ways. And you can certainly create a timeline on paper uh, and do that if you'd like. Just make sure you meet all the criteria that are spelled out in the scoring rubric to go along with this assignment, which you'll find right here. You want to make sure that you choose five to seven events and you put them in the proper order. And then the bulk of the points come from explaining what the event was and why you chose it. So make sure you accomplish that. Also, presentation is nice. You want to have something that looks nice when you're all done. So that's an overview of the week. Uh, obviously, we'll be talking about it in Zoom sessions, but I thought I'd throw that out there just to get you going. And uh, we'll see you 
today at 10.30. See you then.